Here's a new frame. There. This was a, uh, was it a Kona Stinky I think it was, or it started off as, in fact it still is, uh, it's been powder coated black as you can see, matte black, uh, it's got no bearings fitted which are an absolute nightmare to fit them in, uh, especially the, uh, the bottom swing arm bearing. There's actually four bearings in there and you have to drive the damn things out but you have to drive the the swing arm pin that has to be dri driven out it's a nightmare to get them out and to fit them but anyway it's done the reason why I've chosen this is because of how thick the swing arm is because it's got to take a hell of a lot more power than uh, my old one uh, just as a comparison There's my old swing arm. <laughs> it's a bit thicker. Uh, it's only got two bearings. This has got four bearings. Uh, this bit wasn't actually bearinged at all. Where's the other bit? So that's the... I started stripping this back because I put that paint on it but I was going to get this powder coated and then I decided to buy a new frame or get a new frame. And sorry that is bearing. So that goes into there like that. Um, but as you can see it's a lot, if I line that up there, uh, that go there. So you can see that's a lot it's got a lot longer stroke on it, it's a lot wider, a lot deeper swing arm. So what I'm going to do is, um, I've got to put it together. I've got to get, uh, what am I doing? The first thing I've done is, I've splayed this out to 155mm from there to there, which is the width of the wheel. So that should, should fit now. Well, I don't know if it's completely, uh, is it asymmetrical? Don't know. So, uh, the first thing I've got to do is put the, if I can put the rock shocks on, I can turn it upside down and then put the handle, well, I can put the handlebars on, then I can lay it upside down so I can work on it that way. That's a good idea, Tony, do that. Right, the forks are mounted. Oh, it's looking so nice. I am getting some other handlebars, don't worry, they're not going to have that red bloody piece there. Uh, this is just so as I can work on it. Now the first thing... Yeah... When I got these shocks... These shocks are um, obviously rock shocks boxes, and the width of this is 110 millimeters. Now a standard um, a standard width hub is 100 millimeters, so I had to get the extended one and also it's a 20 mil shaft and standard I think the 15 mil or 10 mil or whatever you you know but so I had to get 20 mil and 110 now I thought it was just a case of take the old one off put this one on but it isn't because this is a wider diameter than that so, not only have I got to relace the wheel, but I've also got to get some new spokes because they're going to be too long. Unless I can cut them down and re-tap them, thread them. No, I'll get some new spokes. So that's the first thing, is I've got to measure how long the spokes have got to be for that. <laughs> I remember the nightmare I had before, but you know. I want to add something while I think about it. Uh, during the build of this thing, that, when I'm building it, I'm doing it to my style, I'm doing it to my knowledge, and I'm doing it to my abilities, and I'm doing it to my budget. I'm not doing it like a big bloody manufacturer. So if anybody comments on the video and says, why haven't you done it like Tesla? Why haven't you done it like the big manufacturers? The old world's going to explode and I'm going to have to go out and talk to people. Get over it. You know, I'm not going to reply to your comments. I'll just delete it and bam.
Tanya from commenting. So I'm going to be building this my way, not your way, not the manufacturer's way. So bollocks to you if you don't like it. If you don't like it, don't f watch it. So this wheel, this is actually a motorbike tyre. Listen to this. See, it has to come off the bead all the way around on both sides. <laughs> Yeah, try and do this with one hand. You have to break the bead all the way around and then take it off. Now the thing is, you see, because there isn't a Mrs. Tony, I can use these. <laughs> now, when you're taking a tyre off, especially a tube tyre, obviously you've got to be careful because you're going to pinch the inner tube. So what I do is, and I haven't got another tripod to put the camera on. What I do is, if you get the tyre lever in there, and then on the opposite side, as in here, if you squeeze it together, and you make it, see that groove in there? If you make the tyre go into the groove, didn't Madonna sing that? Whatever. So, you make the tyre go into the groove like that, and then you work your way all the way around and you slowly lever that side and what happens is, is it comes off, it actually pushes the whole tyre upwards and then it comes, it actually comes off a hell of a lot easier because believe me these tyres are a nightmare to get off here they don't want to come off at all so if you do it that way it comes off a lot easier actually I've managed to stop it here look you see this bit here, you can see that that's actually further inwards than that side. So I've pushed that into the recess, like that. Consequently, I can now lever it, um, and then I'll slowly work my way around, and then it'll just come off. These tyres don't, they're not like normal push bike or cycle tyres, you can't just pull them off and, you know, they have to be levered every single part. <sighs> Nightmare. Okay, my mistake. I admit when I'm wrong. There's the old one, and there's the new one. It's the same diameter. It looked that one looked a hell of a lot bigger. Obviously, the shaft's bigger, and the width is bigger. But the diameter of that is okay, is the same, so I'm going to use my ordinary spokes, which are here. Now these are just 14 gauge spokes. I don't know, people are going to be sitting there and they're going to say, Oh, you can't use 14 gauge spokes because they'll snap. No, they bloody don't. I've done over 2,000 miles on this bike now and not one of them has broken, come loose or anything. If you do it bloody properly, nothing happens. Now I'm going to try and show you, don't want that, I'm going to try and show you how to lace a wheel. There's the wheel, there's the spokes, there's the hub. So I'm going to show you how I lace the wheel. Now I know there's going to be people that are going to sit there and say, oh but you should have started left hand or you should have done this and you're not thinking about loading and this that and the other and the bollocks. It's, this is how I built it. I've done over 2,000 mile, like I say, and it, it, I've never had a problem. So, people wanted to know how I build a wheel, so this is how you build it. Well, how, how, how I build it. I don't give a shit how anybody else does it. Right, the first thing you do, you go from the outside, like this. You go from the outside to the inside, every other one, like that. So you can see I've done that one, and then I've done that one, I've done that one, I hope you can see anyway. And I've also done the same on the other side. Now the reason being is, when you come to uh, lace all the wheel up, it's a nightmare to get the outside in. Sorry, it's a nightmare to get them from the outside inwards, because you can't pull them through the spokes on this side. Don't even know if that makes sense, but... You can actually go that way and pull the spokes on the outside, but you can't do it on the inside. Does that make sense? Don't know. Don't give a shit. 
So you lace, um, you lace all the from the outside in first, every other one all the way around on both sides, and then you get one, any one, <coughs> and where the valve is, you go to the nearest one which faces this way, which is that one. Can't do that one because that's the other side. That one is this side. So I get one of the top ones that one and I put it through there and then I get my uh, I get my washer yeah I'm using washers uh, that's to stop the nipples going through the hole <laughs> it works perfectly and then I put it on there and I just loosely do it and then I get the next one which I can't oh this is annoying I can't do it with one hand I get the next one and I miss uh, is it four so you miss one two three and then I do that one and then I miss three again one two three and then I do that one and then one two three and then I do that one it's all the ones that are facing upwards this way and I'll go all the way, go all the way around like that, and then I'll show you the next step. So I've gone from the outside in like that. Uh, the valve hole is there, and then I've gone to the closest one to the right. It might be better doing it left. I'm, I'm left-handed, so you know. Anyway, I've gone to the closest one to the right of the spoke that's actually pointing out this way. And then what I do, I've gone all the way around, and then all I do is turn it as far clock anti-clockwise as I can and then I get another spoke and then I go from the inside sorry I'll go from the other side I'll do it hang on this is so hard to explain <laughs> it's impossible so, <laughs> so I've gone from the outside in like that and then I've gone round like that then I've turned it anti-clockwise and then I've gone from the inside out and then I've gone to the next one sorry I've, can you see what I've done? please tell me I can't explain it I'll just do it and I can't explain how to do it so I've done that one there I've done that one there uh, that's just to hold the tension to stop it from moving. So what I'll do now is I'll go on to the, I'll turn it over and then I'll do it exactly the same on the other side. <laughs> do you get what I mean? Please tell me you know what I mean. So I've got the wheel on the bike. Put the axle on. Put everything on. Now if your spokes sound like this when you're riding along, you've got a problem. Or if your wheel looks like that when you're riding along, you've got a problem. You're going to die. So, obviously this goes in the middle of the dropout, or not the dropout, in the middle of the forks. So what I do is, if you get a cable tie or a zip tie or something like that, and you measure halfway and then you cut the width of that off so as you've actually got a piece just sticking out here so you know exactly where the middle is where it's supposed to be and then it just touches the wheel and then you go around obviously these are all completely loose at the minute and they've got to be tightened up like that now what you've got to bear in mind you've also got you've got your lateral um, which is your sideways movement and you've also got your up and down you have to make sure that it's actually centered on the up and down side as well so as it doesn't see how it's going up and down like that so what I generally do is if you tighten all the spokes to um, near enough the same tension in fact I think I'll do that and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to true it up I've been around all the spokes and tighten them up to roughly the same torque. So what I'm left with is a wheel like this. 
which is what I expect. It's actually better than I thought. But you can see it going up and down as well. Very, very slightly. So what you have to do is, um, and I know some of these are actually pulled slightly out, which I'm a bit worried about, but I think it should balance itself up. What I generally try and do is get the wheel uh, true laterally before I actually do the up and down sort of thing. So what you do is, it's like here, here it's coming out this way towards my finger. So if I was to loosen these two spokes here, and then I'll pull on that spoke and also one either side of it, that should actually pull that wheel that way but you've got to remember to loosen you loosen the spokes off before you tighten any before you undertake this I forgot to mention something uh, these hubs obviously it's actually offset so the wheel cannot be in the middle itself if you have a look at the distance there I've got one finger there and then here uh, there you see that's where because the disc is there the wheel is actually offset now me being bloody stupid you can see you can't see any spokes there when I line the back you can see the back of the wheel just there and then you've got the front of the wheel here you can't see any spokes in view when I line those two up and on this side you can so it's one thing to bear in mind is you can never get the you shouldn't have these ex exactly in the middle right that's the closest I can get it another tip as well when you finish tightening them or when you've tightened them up a certain amount just just you hear that crack then just stretch the go go through and stretch all the spokes just flex them and then you'll find that you need to go around and tighten them again sometimes anyway there you go, there's another one, and another one. So I've still got to go around these a couple of times just to make damn sure, but unfortunately the wheel isn't perfect. It's not... It's not moulded correctly. Oh yeah, there is a balance, there's a balance on there, but I've got to move it. Uh, which I'll do when I've put the tyre back on. So that's as central as I can get it. But there is a bit of an up and down movement as you can probably see. Unfortunately, I mean these wheels were actually made for a CZ250 I think they were. So, you know, you have to make do with what you've got. It worked fine for 2000 miles and it was exactly the same. So I'll put the tyre back on and then I can turn it up the other way. I've got to put the tyre back on, but that's on. The brakes fitted, sort of. I only fitted the brakes so as I can make sure that the caliper actually sits properly on the disc, uh, which it does. I thought I may need a spacer behind it, but I don't. And I've still got to put the rest of the bolts in because I haven't put them all in yet. I've had enough for one day. <laughs> and that's all I've done. <laughs> He's a wheel. <laughs> so, I'm going to resume tomorrow.